Um, it's a very simple process and I'll show you how to connect it. Basically, take the two leads of the battery desulfator and plug them into the battery. Negative desulfator goes to negative battery. Positive desulfator goes to positive battery. And that is how you connect a battery desulfator to a deep cycle battery. There are different types of chargers that can be used to desulfate a battery. And by that I mean when the desulfator is running, it's stealing power from the battery and it's losing it in heat and other forms, so the battery is going to drop even further in energy. This is a 12 volt wall warp plug. This is standard what you'd see in your house kind of wall warp plug. You'd probably have these boxes of these in your garage. Um, all I've done is put some nice battery clamp leads on the end of this one. And what I like to do is while the desulfator is plugged in, plug the negative lead and the positive lead in the same fashion. This would go into the wall outlet now. Now the idea here is that while the desulfator is running and taking energy out of the battery, this charger is trickle charging the battery and making sure that it doesn't go too low. So these are nice because they have no smarts in them. This will keep charging a battery. You'll want to check on the battery at least every 12 hours and make sure there's no heat coming off the battery and that the voltage of the battery looks reasonable, below 15 volts. Remove the battery desulfator and the charger that are connected right now. I always remove negative lead first and then positive, and when I attach things it's always negative lead first and then positive. One of the most important tools when desulfating a battery is having a load tester. This is a fairly inexpensive load tester. I bought it for $15 new. They go up to $60 and then way up from there for some really high-end digital ones. You don't need to spend that much. Um, what I like to do is before I start desulfating a battery, see how much load it can handle. Negative lead goes to negative battery. Positive lead goes to positive battery. And you simply hit the load button and watch to see how far the meter drops. Now the idea here is you can start by seeing the 12 volt battery maybe drops down to 6 volts when you first put the load meter on it. And then as you charge it up and do your desulfation process you can see that it probably won't drop as much. It might hold 10 volts and eventually 12 volts after a few weeks. So the idea here is that you have a gauge now to see the progress of your battery, how much energy it's holding. So I like to load test all my batteries before I start desulfating and then start testing them every few days with the load tester again to see how much they, they uh, can hold the charge better. Uh, normally you'll want to hold this load button for about 10 seconds. This is a multimeter. I have it set for a 20 volt voltage setting right now. This battery is only reading about 12 and a half volts. But what I can do is pick the negative lead, put on the negative battery, positive lead of the multimeter, positive battery, and we get a voltage number. I think it's about 12, it's just below 12 and a half right now. Um, that's a pretty good voltage for a battery that's just sitting. Again, if it drops below 12.3 volts, that's bad. You're sulfating again. Crystals are being formed on the lead plates. It means your battery is slowly dying. Um, this is what I like to do when I'm testing batteries at, whether it's marinas or auto parts stores. I like to go and quickly just do a quick voltage check to see where the batteries are. And then I usually take the batteries with the highest voltage. You can also do a load tester and see what kind of loads batteries can handle, but this is a much faster way to quickly go through batteries. Okay, here's a trick I learned from a little manual and it's been really useful for testing batteries. What I do is I have my multimeter and I pop the caps off the battery. And then I take the red lead of my multimeter, the positive, and the negative lead of the multimeter and I put that right into the acid. So the negative is actually floating in the acid. Don't push it down so it touches the plates. That's not a good idea. But the idea is that you want to get voltage readings from each individual cell. And they should read somewhere around two volts each. Um, it's also good while you got the, pop, the caps off to look inside the cell and see if you see any white stuff in there. That's sulfation, that's the sulfur crystals. Or if you see any sort of um, uh, dirt and other crap in there, or maybe you see one cell that's completely off. But the idea here is that you can test each cell individually and see how good the battery is. Sometimes you get a single cell failure and that battery, it doesn't matter how much you desulfate it, it's always going to read in the 10 volt area, too low. 
and it's an unusable battery. Okay. I mentioned that you can use these wall wart chargers to charge the battery. I like 12 volt half amp. There are other types of chargers. Sometimes I use solar panels like this. Like this is a small 12 volt solar panel, which does a pretty good job of charging batteries as well. And it has the added benefit that instead of having to check on it every 12 hours, you can just check on the battery every day because you're not going to get more than 12 hours of light hitting the solar panel. So you have less likely that the battery will overheat or overcharge. Finally, there is a third type of charger that I occasionally use. These are automotive chargers. These are trickle chargers. Uh, I like them because they do have some smarts where they back off as the battery gets charged. So at some point, they just kind of keep the battery at just a small trickle charge, and they don't just keep pushing 8 amps into the battery. Um, these, are, these are good for uh, flooded deep cycle batteries, but I don't like these so much for like motorcycle and gel batteries. They tend to charge a little too quickly. They tend to overcharge. So I've had good luck with battery desulfators. Uh, and I've been able to measure my results by using load testing to see how much more capacity the battery has. And I sell these units online, the Mini D desulfator, for $50 each. And if you'd like to buy one, you can use the PayPal link off my blog, which is blog.holyscraphotsprings.com. Thank you.